Kurt and I met in Chicago uh, in 1993. Not that long after that, he had been given the opportunity for some support to uh, help provide a budget for doing some recording and uh, asked me to help him with that and to co-produce it with him and do arrangements for him and uh, we started working on it and I can't remember exactly how long. I know that we recorded in 94 uh, and it was a real sort of a Cinderella story because uh, he through channels got a reputable manager and this person knew uh, uh, the great Bruce Lundvall, uh, uh, who I, I recently heard he just retired, but he's been the head of Blue Note Records for a very long time. And uh, uh, Bruce heard the demo and was just nuts about it. And basically that's what was put out as the first record. And it got a Grammy nomination and every record we've made has gotten nominated. So uh, nice track record we've managed to somehow weave together. I think of myself foremost as a player, but it's, it's curious. Uh, I will admit, apparently, uh, I, I do have sort of a unique approach to arranging and composing. Um, and when coupled with Kurt's vision, the two of us, I think, both embrace the two heads are better than one idea. So we've sort of really created a sound that's uh, evolving um, uh, but it's unique. One of the really nice things about most of the writing I've been able to do is that it's all been, uh, and increasingly uh, been, for projects that were definitely slated for uh, recording and release. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, artists out there that, that labor under the unfortunate uh, handicap of not being necessarily sure whether their efforts are going to be performed at all, much less recorded, much less recorded for reputable uh, labels. Uh, so that's a luxury that I've enjoyed. Um, it's, uh, it puts me in mind of my favorite Duke Ellington quote, uh, since, since uh, it, was, it was mentioned that uh, people compare, are starting to compare us to Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn. That's a new one to me. I hadn't heard that myself, but Frequently, that's the way those things are. Uh, Duke was being interviewed about his writing, and uh, he was commenting that he never had been able to understand classical, neoclassical, whatever composers that might work for six months or a year on a piece and then finish it, and it might be another six months or a year before they would actually get to hear it performed. And he was saying that that would drive him crazy that he had to be able to write something this morning and hear it tonight. And the quote was, that is why I keep these very expensive gentlemen with me to gratify that desire. Uh, I always loved that. So our record that won a Grammy this year was uh, for standard rhythm section, Kurt, obviously, string quartet, and the great Ernie Watts on uh, saxophone. And uh, we recorded it live at Lincoln Center in a live performance, and I was basically sitting there playing this beautiful nine-foot concert, Grand Steinway, uh, and at the same time, all of what the string quartet was playing were the ideas that I had committed to the score paper, so it's kind of both at the same time. That's a real rush, and I will never stop uh, enjoying that. Whether I'm writing something original or if I'm trying to come up with a, a signature arrangement of something from the Great American Songbook, or it could even be something that is more purely jazz in its uh, origin, but I want to rework it a little bit, flesh it out. There's a sense of detachment, almost, that's required. You have to be able to listen to, ironically, you have to be able to listen to a piece of music in your head, uh, exempt of any energy that has to do with you putting your stamp on it, in order for you to successfully put your stamp on it. Our trio right now, 
as has often been the case, uh, is uh, actually com composed of myself with the bass player and drummer who play most frequently with Kurt. This is because these are the people that I play with uh, the most. Um, I do right now have a couple of projects I'm working on that involve uh, establishing local trios, a, a West Coast trio, a Midwest trio, an East Coast trio, but whenever possible, I like to work uh, with uh, these two individuals, great young musicians, uh, Harish Raghavan on bass and Ulysses Owens on drums. A lot of my original material, which will comprise most of what we do at Tanglewood, uh, is very composed. Everything I write uh, is written with improvisation in mind. Um, and also, if I may be so bold as to say it, coming from Chicago, uh, the Chicago ethos is very, very grounded in swinging. So even when we're playing something that's uh, complex form and structure, that's even eighth notes as opposed to swung eighth notes, the the idea of a very dug-in, uh, committed, um, uh, emotionally multifaceted, and yet still grounded in something that's very earthy, uh, very grounded in the, I'll just call it the philosophy of swinging. Uh, uh, so the, the, the people that I like to play with have got to be able to access that um, but because, for better or worse, uh, due to the fortuitousness of my technical training from a, coming from a classical background, I'm a very technical player and I need to be playing with guys that are as well. So uh, that's kind of the idea behind the trio and these guys execute uh, brilliantly. It's, it's a lot of fun to play with them. My most recent CD was a really amazing experience getting to play duets uh, with the incredible Charlie Hayden um, and uh, also my friend Kurt uh, uh, graced us uh, on three tracks as a guest artist. Um, uh, this came about as I, I, I've done a bunch of records for a UK based audiophile label called NAME, spelled N-A-I-M. And so it just all sort of kind of came together that, uh, that we were able to uh, get together at Cal Arts. Uh, well, Charlie's one of the founders of the, the music program there. And uh, in the Roy O. Disney Hall there, uh, uh, he brought his uh, Viome bass, which was part of the thrill because that bass doesn't leave Los Angeles anymore. Uh, this bass is a really amazing instrument uh, and uh, especially when uh, Charlie Hayden is the one who's playing it. Charlie was beautiful man. We recorded for two full days. Uh, I went back a third day to do some solo piano stuff um, and uh, uh, the whole thing was just was just really thrilling and I sort of planned the repertoire around Charlie's sound and just what the way I feel about Charlie's earthiness and his his intuition for for profundity and and depth. Uh, he's 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 a musician, you know. He's not a bassist. He plays music. A really cool thing. One of the tunes on the record is an old Hoagie Carmichael tune called New Orleans, uh, and. Uh, Charlie didn't know about it. He didn't know the tune, which, which was a particular thrill to me to be able to, A, come up with anything <laughs> uh, from the, what could, you could call the Great American Songbook that Charlie wasn't familiar with, but particularly something with that title uh, and that significance. And uh, he, loved, he loved the song. Uh, 